Okay, I picked up this uh, mini split. Uh, it's nothing special. It's not electronic or anything. Uh, it's actually just a different form of a uh, condensing unit. It just looks a little different. It's two ton. This one was removed because uh, there was a refrigerant leak. The diagnosis appeared to be that the condenser coil had a leak in it. I didn't find any oil slicks on the condenser coil or anything like that, but there's a lot of oil inside the panel. So let's go ahead and take a look inside this thing and we'll see if we can find out what actually happened. Okay, here we got to look inside this thing. One of the first things I wanted to note is down here. Okay, looking down here you can see there is quite a bit of oil. Uh, look in the bottom pan. Lots of, lots of oil there. So let's try to follow this. I see there's a little bit here on this. Okay, we've seen quite a bit of oil in the bottom, but uh, what I usually like to do is look a little higher to see if I can find anything. Uh, now, right here, the top of the compressor, it also has uh, some oil on it. Uh, one of the other things I like to look at, like the uh, service ports here, uh, there should be a lot of oil on this thing. And I don't see, you know, I see maybe just a little bit in there, that, but that could be from when they uh, put gauges on and took them off. Okay, this is one of the next things I want to look at is right there. That is a low temperature solder that is supposed to blow off if there's high temperature and dump the charge out of the unit. Uh, and I can't really find anything on it. Let's look a little closer at it. This did not seem to have any more oil on it than anything else. So uh, I don't think that's the problem. So let's go a little farther. Now I've got another tap right there. Uh, but I don't see anything really terribly abnormal. There is, there's more oil up here. It looks like there's a little bit of oil on these U-bends because they look a little bit wet. Uh, I'm going to pull the other side off of this and we'll see what it looks like from there. Okay, when I opened up the other side here, I went ahead, you know, I'm looking down like that. There's nothing special down there. Now you can hear that. That's, uh, that's what leak is. And we'll get a close-up on it and see exactly where that leak is. Okay, that picture's not real good, but you can see a faint white line right next to the sheet metal. So we're going to go ahead and cut that sheet metal out of there and see if we can uh, do a repair on this thing. And then I'll demonstrate how the repair is done. I am running uh, nitrogen through the lines so we don't corrode the inside of the copper. And I should also note that the uh, tubing is very thin in these coils. So you got to be a little careful with that torch or you could put a hole in the tubing. And also you need to sand off that tubing to get it clean before you start. Okay, when you braze this thing, you want to put braze around the entire piece of tubing because the tubing did split probably from uh, fatigue. So uh, the braze is much stronger than copper, so you'd want to put it around the entire piece of tubing. Okay, now we're going to leak check. We have pressurized it with an inert gas, and I'm using soap bubbles for the leak test. Uh, generally, if you have a leak in these Silphos connections, they either leak like a sieve or they don't leak at all. Uh, 
So uh, we're looking for leaks not only in that pipe, but in the ones near it in case when you're cutting something out there, you may have uh, nicked a pipe. Uh, and you do your pressure test. Uh, would hold your pressure in there for anywhere from 15 minutes to a half hour uh, to be sure you got no drop in pressure. In summary, this is a viable repair. Uh, it was not done on this piece of equipment. The entire piece of equipment was uh, replaced. And uh, I would think probably an hour spent cleaning this up and uh, soldering that pipe would put you back in business. So I think this is a viable repair.